Welcome to Talking Live. I'm Dr. Robbie Ludwig, and you are joining us during our COVID-19 special. And I am so jazzed to have George Brescia here. He is a top celebrity stylist. He has an amazing book. He's a fabulous writer. And he is going to raise our quarantine fashion IQ. I know many of you have some questions about how to look your very best. He's the man who's going to help us. Thank you, George, for joining us. Oh my God, Robbie, you are so sweet for having me. And I have to say, you're starting off right in that gorgeous color. You are totally lit. It's illuminating you and you look really good. You know what? I'm not going to lie. For some reason, I was drawn to purple for you. It, it was just, I don't know what it was, but I was like, I need to wear purple for George. And I'm not sure what that was about. But sometimes we are drawn to certain colors over others. Yes. What is well, I just think that, you know, just like we're drawn to certain, you know, flowers or artwork, we're drawn to certain colors, but I have to say that that color looks really good on you. And it's also a good television color and a good Zoom color and a good social media color. You know, we'll get into that a little bit later, but you're doing it right. Thank you. I have to say, uh, one of the, I guess, perks of being in the TV business, when I was working on a show, it's many, many years ago, and they actually hired a stylist for me for the show. Oh, I have never had a stylist before. I always kind of function as my own stylist. And I, I was always drawn to the same things, which I'm sure you see all the time, George. You know, yeah. we get the same color, the same style of clothes. And it was because of the stylist that I started to learn the importance of jewel colors for television. And yeah. I would not do it without her. Yeah, I mean, so there's tones of color that we look good in. I mean, first of all, let's get into it. Like, right, so we're at a time now where it's all about Zoom calls. It's all about social media, Instagram lives, you know, whether you're hosting one or you're on someone's. And sometimes you can even go into someone's and they have different guests come on. So you're seeing people are being seen more now than yeah. before this pandemic. And so it's really set us up. We're kind of our own television stars. You know, and it's really true because you're seen by more people than you would have. And you really want to make that effort because you want to look good on camera. And of course, it's the top half that we're seeing. So I think that that really invites a whole new inventory of things that we need to deal with. And one of them is wearing the right colors. So, you know, there's color palettes that people live really well in based on skin tone, hair color and eye color. And then there's also colors that just look really good on camera within that category per person. So I'm just gonna give you some broad, broad tips, right? Yeah, please do. How do we find out the right color? How do yes. we know what works for us? Yeah, so this is very much in general. So people with dark skin and dark eyes and dark hair, you know, really look really great in those jewel tones, those big, bright pop colors, that fuchsia, that deep purple, that cobalt blue, you know, that lemon yellow, those really bright, colors and then you have like blondes and redheads that really look good in neutrals camel camel and cream together you know um all of those like wheats and topes and they look really pretty and sometimes people will say well that might wash me out well no because it, you have very light skin and very light features and it actually illuminates you black is not a great color and it's not a great color even on camera because it drains us i'm wearing like a deep midnight navy today you know with red and it's all about like finding those colors that look really good with your skin tone, your hair color, your eye color. So when you look at celebrities or hosts of television shows, let's just take, for example, a Deborah Messing from Will & Grace, right? Mm -hmm. She's a ginger. You would always see her in something that would highlight her hair, which would be all those corals and orange and pumpkin and all of those fall tones to really bring out her hair. Or you'd see any shade of blue turquoise, sky blue, any, because she had blue eyes. So to pop her blue eyes, or when she would do like a metallic, because all of that gold in her skin, she would wear gold, you see? So that's really what you have to think about. First, the easiest way to do it when you're on a Zoom call, look at your eye color. If you've got blue eyes, wear some shade of blue. If you've got okay. green eyes, wear some shade of blue or green. If you have brown eyes, you could wear a chocolate brown or mix or with cream, or if you're dark skin, just do a bright pop color. You know, women can kind of take things and alter it a little bit 
with their makeup. So that could, gives you more options than, some, than us men because you can really enhance your makeup to wear different colors, especially on camera. George, I'm sure you have heard this. I hear it in my private practice all the time. Now people are, are dating via Zoom, right? So there's a video component to this yeah. virtual dating. Yes. And I think dressing the right kind of way is really important to upping your game in terms of being sexy and appealing without, I guess, being inappropriate. Yeah, it's so true. And so here's the thing. So we're just talking about basic colors, right? Like what colors make you look good on camera? But then, and that's just to find out what colors. Then the next step is, and this is what I talk about in my book, change your clothes, change your life because you can't go I naked. Can I just say that people are describing your book as a fashion Bible, and it is so psychologically on point, George. I don't know if you have a background in psychology or not. but No, but I just have been coaching a lot of clients my whole life, and there's such an emotional side to getting dressed that I really understood the two just from all of the feedback that I've learned throughout all of the years from my clients, whether they're famous or not. But going back to your dating online, so... And also in life, right? Let's take, yes. we'll, we'll take, for example, like the little black dress. So people say, oh, well, I have a little black dress in my closet. But what kind of black dress is it? Is it a sexy black dress? Is it a sophisticated crew neck with a, you know, with a short sleeve that you're going to wear with a lot of pearls and make it look very Chanel, which is very conservative? Is it a flowy, romantic you know, sort of organza chiffon black dress that sort of suggests you might be going out dancing. It's so, you can't just have a little black dress. There's like 5 million different kinds of black yeah. dress that say different things. It's the same thing with your dating. Your, and I talk about this in the book, the secret language of clothing. Your clothes speak before you do. And you better make sure that they're saying what you want them to. So if you're dating, and you don't want to come off as being like super provocative and super sexy, then I wouldn't wear a sexy top. But at the same time, maybe you don't want to come off as conservative and boring. So like what kind of a top suggests your personality? You have to really think about that and what that means. And I would say, you know, if, if someone's not in a position to hire a stylist, ask a friend who could be honest with you. I was working with somebody who said that somebody came up to her at a bar and thought she was a woman of the night. Is that what they call them now? I don't know what they call them. A very <laughs> polite way of saying that. Yes, my love, I'm with you. Okay. And she's like, I don't know why anyone would think that of me. And I was thinking, I kind of do. Because look what you look like. Look what you're saying. Right. It was like what she was saying with her outfit was, come pick me up. And it looked like she just wanted one thing. But it really is true that we are making a statement about who we are, who we want to be. And one of the things your book recommends is asking what kind of image do you want to present when you Absolutely. That's absolutely. Because here's the thing. You, we all wear clothing. We have to, by law. We're required to, right? We can't go naked. So, you know, your clothes are talking and you really have to, when you put something on and you look in the mirror, you have to ask yourself the question, what a, do I want to say today? And B, what does this say that I have on? Because it is saying something. What I think is hilarious, like so funny. I'll use for an example, sometimes I'll go through someone's closet and, you know, we'll find like, you know, a sweatshirt and like maybe like, you know, like a really like old pair of jeans that are too big on her. And I'll say, well, what's going on here? And she's like, oh, you know what? I just wear that at night when I go to walk the dog. And I'm like, um, are you single? Did you want to stay single? Hello? Like, let's wear the cute jeans that fit you nice, the sweater that fits you and is in a good color. Throw your hair in a ponytail, put a lip on, a little mascara, and guess what? Maybe you'll have a date for a Friday night because you're not invisible. We see you. Like, it's hilarious. Oh, they'll say, it's isn't it true, true, Robbie? Like, So true. And George, you, you know this. Anywhere is a place where you can meet that right person. It can happen on the street. It can happen in Starbucks. Now there isn't a lot open. So maybe it really truly is on the street. Well, absolutely. And, and here's the other thing. How about this? You're going outside the house to run an errand. Maybe you're going to the grocery store. Maybe you're going to the post office. Maybe you're going to the drugstore. And then you bump into your ex or someone that you've been only out yeah. two days with. Or better yet, like 
your employer or like if you're an actress, maybe it's like a casting agent. And you're like, oh no, don't look at me. I'm just, what do you mean don't look at you? We see you, you're not invisible. Hello. I had a nightmare story when I first moved to the city. Um, and I, I came from an all women's college. So we had this bad habit of not wearing any makeup and just looking drab during the day and getting dressed up whenever we were socializing. And I brought that to the city and I bumped into somebody from college and he reported back to our other friends, Rodney didn't look so good. And I was like, yeah, I, I have to switch that up because it's true, you never know who's going to see you. And just even for yourself, I have found during this quarantine, and, and you can speak to this, George, I don't want to look at myself if I don't have something on. Like, and that's a sign to me. If I don't want to look at myself, then I need to up my game, even if no one's around. What are your thoughts for people who are struggling with this time to right. actually put on something that feels good? So here's the thing. So what you're talking about is what I talk about in my book. The moment that you take a breath and you think about what do I look like today? What is this clothing saying about me? Even if you're home with your family quarantined, with a partner, with a friend or even by yourself because you maybe you're going to get on the phone that day and talk to family members or friends on video the moment that you question that is the moment that you have to connect to yourself and get present and that is what self-care and self-love is and self-esteem and integrity and authenticity you're taking a moment to say okay wait a minute this is me i'm looking in the mirror how do I feel? How do I want to feel? How do yeah. I want to be seen? What kind of a day do I want? And even if you're not going to be exposed to anyone that day, maybe you just want to feel nice. So you need, you need to know that if you go on and put something from your closet on that makes you feel good, and that's up to you what that is, whether it's a sweatshirt, a sweater, a pant, a dress, a skirt, who knows what it is, right? It's all about what we to experiment too if you're in your house and you want to try a different look you have an opportunity to do that and see how it feels why do you think we get I, the only word i can think of is lazy why do we get lazy when we're not out and about or it's playing? actually not lazy. it's actually not lazy what it is is i think something deeper than that which is okay. to say you're disconnected from yourself. Maybe you do, you're not even aware of it. You might be a little unhappy. You might be a little blue and you're not even aware of it. You, you, you're not connecting to yourself because here's the perfect example. And I'm going to watch your face smile when I say this. How okay. many times have you heard people that are being interviewed on Zoom and on these calls, whether all these talk shows right now, and they say, oh my God, I finally got dressed today. I feel so good. I did my hair. I did my makeup. And they're smiling and they're like, I feel so good. I haven't showered in the past three days and I haven't gotten dressed. They were feeling bad. And yeah. it starts to spiral down because one day can turn into the next and you're wearing the sweatpants and you're like, oh, I'll shower tomorrow or I'll wash my hair tomorrow. You don't feel good. Why? because you're disconnecting from yourself. The further away that you get from yourself, the worse yeah. off you're gonna be, the more connected to yourself. By the way, this has nothing to do with glamor, nothing. This is about self-care and self-love mm -hmm. because when you take that time to wash your hair, even if you're just pulling it back in a ponytail and you're yeah. just putting on like a little mascara and a little lip, and again, the sweatshirt that makes you feel really good with the jeans, you've connected back into yourself. Yeah. That's and what self-love and self-care is. I, I, I agree. And also I've had just nutritionists say, put on your jeans, put on your pants. That's right. So that don't get too disconnected from That's right. That's what right. you're eating That's right. and how you look like. That's and right. I, in your book again, because it's so fabulous and we're going to have a link up because your book is coming out in soft cover right now, right, yeah, George? Thank you. Yeah, my book is coming out in paperback. And listen, change your clothes, change your life, because you can't go naked. That's right. 
So it's so exciting. It's coming back out in August and we're relaunching in paperback. And actually what I've done is a couple of things. So let me show you. So this is my book, this great cover. And right. yeah, lots of color. It's so me, you know? And, and so what, we, what we've done is an opportunity to um, change some things about the book in terms of the forward. So I've rewritten a whole new forward and it's basically what I have learned since the book first came out. And because I have been traveling the country doing style events all over the country, you know, whether it's like Sioux Falls or Fargo or mm. Ponte Vedra, Florida, or San Francisco, California, I've been everywhere doing this. I've learned so much from women across the country. I actually changed the subtitle as well. And we're calling it Change Your Clothes, Change Your Life, Because You Are Worth It. And I wanted to change that subtitle because you are worth it. I have found from women all over the country that what they all have in common, including celebrities, by the way, you know, I must say it's all the same. They want to feel good. They want to feel confident. They want to be connected to themselves in a way, whatever size they are, whether they're a two or whether they're a 14, it doesn't matter. They all want to feel good. They all want to feel pretty. They, they want to know that they matter. And, when they know how to dress whatever body that they're in, it enables them to feel confident to take on the world in whichever way they want to, you know, whether it's finding the right love or finding the right job. It's so true. I have noticed that when you're dressed in a way that you can feel good about, it feels like your dreams are possible. You know, when you look at yourself and you're taking care of yourself. And one of the things that I've noticed just in terms of, I'm always a jewelry person anyway, but I've noticed like a fun earring for Zoom interviews take on a whole new importance for me. Even if Absolutely. It's yeah, accessories are huge. And, and here's the thing, like right now, you know, obviously you can shop, but you know, finding accessories is a great thing to do because it's, it's more affordable and mm -hmm. it's a great way to change up your look and change up your wardrobe. You know, I had a celebrity reach out to me um, last week because she just got a television show that she's going to be the host of. And she was really concerned about how am I going to look good on this television show that I'm going to be the host of. I can't hire makeup. I can't hire hair. I can't hire you to go shopping with me or, you know, bring in a bunch of clothes. Like, what am I going to do? And I said, okay, this is, this is not going to be a problem. Here's what we're going to do. First of all, we're going to get a hair person and we're going to get on zoom and we're going to do a bunch of tutorials for different hair. Then we're going to get the makeup person to do the same thing. Then we're going to get some accessories that we're going to have get sent to you. And we're going to work on this whole thing on the camera. But the point is, that's what we have to do now. It's like, it's all about like accessories. How can you, how can you enhance your wardrobe in the most effective ways? And it's such a great time to experiment because we have time. So maybe you're going on Pinterest, yeah. you're looking at different hairstyles and you're looking at different makeup tutorials. And if you have Zoom calls and you have these parties, I went to a birthday party the other night on Zoom with like- It's kind of convenient. I yeah, hope I don't with like 50 people. They were, they had a playlist, they were dancing, they had a psychic come in. I mean, it was crazy. It was like so much fun. We were all dancing and everybody was dressed up. So I have, I have a question though, in terms of what we're going to be wearing once this is all over. Like, I have to tell you, one of the things that I've been drawn to and I wasn't in the past are scarves, vintage scarves that I can wear as a mask. I want to be styling with my outfit when I go outside and I hate the look of a mask. What do you think are going to be the new trends as a result of this pandemic? So, I mean, yeah, so obviously people have gotten super creative with these masks, you know, and doing scarves and making um, masks out of scarves and fabrics and all kinds of things and neoprene. I've seen it all. And, you know, like from the, from the lowest of price points, you know, that people are doing their own and selling them to Gucci's doing stuff, you know, like it's hilarious. And uh, designers, yeah. like wedding designers, you know, very like decorative, sparkly. I think, you know, I think some of the trends that we're going to see going forward, it's going to be all about transitional clothing, you know, like mm -hmm. clothing that you're comfortable in, but it enables you to look great as well. So like denim is having like a moment, it was having a moment mm -hmm. before this, but it's all about stretch, cozy, comfy denim. 
where you don't even feel like you're in a pair of jeans because there's so much, there's a fabric that's been put in this uh, denim called Lyosil. And Lyosil gives the denim that really soft hand. So Lyosil mixed with the cotton and the spandex and the stretch make for this beautiful, lightweight, cozy, cozy denim that people are feeling fantastic in. So I think it's all about clothing that really fits a casualness but still looks good and finding those kinds of pieces that do that. And that's really kind of where we are. You mentioned a couple of things in your book and we've discussed this too, the closet. I can't tell you how many times one's closet has come up during this time, both friends, patients, family, kind of this feeling like they want to edit their closet and it's overwhelming or maybe you want to shop in your closet. Yeah. Now there's a lot of different uh, feelings people have towards their closet. And I think that that can lower their self-esteem. What are you recommending right now to edit your closet in a way that makes sense? So I think that, you know, um, a lot of people didn't get a chance to do spring cleaning because of the pandemic sort of hit like, right, you know, March. So that's kind of when people kind of do it and get ready for the summer. So first things first, I would get rid of the last season and put that into a place wherever you do. If you have, you know, some people box things up and they send it to a storage unit, whatever your situation is. But when you're doing that, really go through, first of all, let's see what fits, you know, like what is still fitting you? You know what I mean? Like, and, and let's get, you know, serious about that. I'm not such a believer in having like a couple sizes in your closet because you have to love the body that you're in and you have to dress that body. And if you have clothing, a lot of clothing that's too small, it just makes you feel bad, you know? Yeah. And you really want clothing that fits. So I think and once you get past the seasonal part of it, then you want what I call a closet full of perfect tens. Mm. Clothing that just looks amazing on you, you know, that fits you beautifully, that's in the right color. And people say, well, how do I know if it's a 10? Well, you know, because, oh, do you hear New York in the background? That's okay. Listen, we are in New York. You and I are both in New York, George. So that's what yeah. happens. Sounds of New York City. I know. I have to acknowledge it because it's like, what is that? Um, <laughs> so I think what happens is that you want to, you, you know, that's when you get on a, the phone with a friend or you do like a closet, closet edit, maybe through FaceTime if you don't, if you're mm -hmm. alone during this pandemic. But if not, if you've got, you know, the husband or the daughter or the boyfriend or whoever's in your house, and let's just go through each thing and make sure that it fits you, that it's in the right color, that you look great in it. And a lot of times, you guys, we're going to know. It's like we don't know how we know, but we do. It's like when you go shopping and you put something on and you go into the dressing room and you're like, I don't know why it looks good, but this is it. Like, this is the one. And if you're not sure, then you ask a friend. And another way that you can tell, look at the things in your closet. This is hilarious. Look at the things in your closet that you get compliments on because sometimes you'll have something in your closet. Maybe you bought it at Target yeah. and maybe it was literally $25, but it happens to be an amazing color on you. It happens to fit you super cute and you're like hysterical because every time you wear this $25 top, your girlfriends are like, Robbie, you look so cute in that. What's going on? Like that is the cutest top. Who is that? And you're like, you won't believe it if I tell you. And that's the whole thing. When you have clothes that look amazing on you and you know what, how to do that, you can shop at any. I agree. I, I, I'm not um, into labels. I like what looks good. I'm drawn to anything. Where There are a lot of sales out right now. Is there any place you're recommending your clients shop? I think that just like going online and looking at all of your favorite stores that you, maybe you were shopping at before, Mm -hmm. They're having a lot of deals like you just said. So I would start there and then I would just go and look and see, you know, what everybody's doing. It's like just when you start surfing the internet, I think you're going to find that it, there's so much out there that is fantastic. And, you know, I happen to say, I love ASOS. I don't know if you know mm -hmm. ASOS. Yeah. Isn't it British? Yes, it is. And they have okay. a lot of amazing stuff. And that's just like one that that's like super inexpensive. And then sometimes for these younger girls, I have to say Lulu's. You know, yeah. they're fabulous too because they're super inexpensive and they have a lot of great stuff. Those are just like two, just to give you an example. And I always love for basics like, you know, Uniqlo and The Gap and Banana mm -hmm. and J. Crew And just, those are great basics. But even if you look at like Ralph Lauren and you look at like Jay McLaughlin and some of these stores, 
they're having amazing sales right now and they have really cool things. So it's a combination of you don't have to shop in order to up your game. You could just shop right. your it. You could look at sales. You can ask your friends what they think looks best on you. Use your own judgment and what feels good. George, it is so great to have you. I can't wait to have you back in studio. We want to mention again your book, which is coming out in soft cover. When is it coming out? What's the launch date? The launch date is uh, uh, August. I think it's August 15th. Oh, great. Right around my birthday. Change your clothes, change your life. And then we have a new subtitle because you're because worth it. Because you are worth it. Yes. You are worth it. And you are definitely worth it, George. Are, are you being hired out virtually to help people right now? People are, you know, I, people are, are calling me and they're hiring me. So you can get a hold of me at georgebrescia.com or uh, okay. my name, George Brescia, is all of my social media. I also, you can see me on QVC pretty regularly. Um, I am on for Logo by Lori Goldstein and I am their brand ambassador and we've been having so much fun and it's just been great. So catch Terrific. me. I would love to answer any questions that you have and um, I just love helping people and making them feel good. Fantastic. So we will have links up so everybody can find George and, and ask questions directly. Thank you for joining us during Talking Live and we'll see you next week. Thanks, Robbie.